This is the first movie ever made, a recording of Venus passing the sun taken back in 1874. But this isn't Venus, this is just the test footage. Here's what Venus passing the sun really looks like. So why is it that the first movie we have is just test footage? And what happened to the original Venus recordings? And how did that lead us to the invention of this? The camera gun. In the 1800s, no one knew precisely how far away the sun was, which is a crazy milestone that humanity was on the cusps of achieving. But the problem was, there was only a small window of time for scientists to figure it out. And that required innovation in technology, which brought about the Janssen Revolver, a device used to record Venus passing in front of the sun on an expedition across over 80 countries. Yet, no footage ever made it back. Only this test footage remains. The revolver was made by him, Jules Caesar Janssen. But it's not that behind him, it's this, the tool which inadvertently led to the origins of filmmaking and inspired the creation of the chronophotographic gun, which was eventually adapted to train World War I pilots in air-to-air -air combat. But I'll come back to that. Venus passes the sun twice every 100 years, with only eight years separating those sightings. When Venus passes in front of the sun, it allows a frame of reference for distance. From the Earth, making observations at two different points would allow accurate measurements would determine the distance between the Earth and the Sun, known as the astronomical unit. But because the event is so infrequent, it's meant that since its first sighting in 1631, astronomers had failed to measure it accurately enough, causing debate between scientists. In 1874, the transit of Venus was scheduled to appear again, but this time advances in photography would allow for the first time images to document the event. Janssen proposed to use his revolver, a device based on the original Colt pistol. It could record one image every second, a speed too slow for the motion of people, but perfect for observing relatively slow-moving astrological events. It worked using the daguerreotype photography method, where a treated silver plate would be exposed to light and later developed using mercury. This light-sensitive daguerreotype disc would rotate behind a copper shutter disc containing 12 holes, which could be used to adjust the aperture. The operator was able to adjust the time interval between exposures, which was driven by a motorised clock, which could stop and start when needed. Janssen's revolver wasn't keenly accepted by the French, but that didn't discourage him from using it on the expedition. However, not so far from Paris, members of the Royal Astronomical Society, based in Greenwich, London, found the device very interesting, and created one modified based on Janssen's design. They would test a few different iterations of the design, but with little time to perfect it, and the transit of Venus not far off, they would only have one chance to get it right. One of the key locations on the multi-continental expedition was Hawaii, whilst at the same time the French were in St. Paul Island, part of the French Southern and Antarctic lands, with Janssen himself in Kobe, Japan. Although formally photographed, one of the British men in the expedition kept a diary, chronicling the event with caricatures of their adventure. His diary gives a completely different view to what was supposed to be a serious scientific expedition. It brings their story to life in a way that would not have been possible if we only had written accounts. Janssen spent his time in Japan recording official measurements for the French Astronomical Society, using multiple telescopes and recording illustrations of Venus. He managed to successfully capture the transit of Venus at two of his Japanese stations using the Janssen revolver. But even though hundreds of images were recorded across the expeditions by the French and the British, none of them can be found today. These images were all supposedly correctly exposed, so the reason for their disappearance seems to be a mystery. Quote, it's extraordinary that none of the great number of revolver plates successfully exposed during the transit, including Janssen's own, can now be traced. So George Airy was a key figure in the British expedition to document the transit of Venus, but only published his findings in 1881. There's some speculation that this is due to his disappointment with the results of the observations, and that the images were unable to improve upon existing knowledge. But Janssen's revolver itself was not lost, and in 1882, eight years after the expedition, huge improvements were made by Etienne Jules Marie with his invention of the chronophotographic gun. The gun could produce sequential images of moving animals for the first time and is considered to be the first portable motion picture camera. It allowed the operator to move the camera to record motion 
unlike the fixed position of Janssen's design. The gun would record a maximum of 12 images onto a disc, which could easily be reloaded. But not only did he figure out how to record the motion, he also managed to show the motion back. Using his Fentakistoscope technology, he realized Janssen's dream of both analysis and synthesis in his words. The Fentakistoscope was an animation technique developed in the 1830s, mostly used as a toy, but it could create the illusion of movement in a way that was not seen before. It worked by having the user look through a slit that would narrow their field of view, allowing the images to overlap and create the optical illusion. Marie decided to incorporate the Fenikistoscope illusion with his images by using footage of a bird in flight. But being an inventor, he took this another step further, developing a 3D model of the footage he captured, known as a 3D zoetrope. Looking at the camera gun and the camera revolver might give us a clue as to why we say shooting a movie. But the camera gun was not just an evolution of Janssen's design, as it came into existence to solve an unsuspecting need. Etienne Jules Marie was a doctor who had made multiple inventions in medicine, like this wearable seismograph. His camera gun was another one of his inventions, which he believed would allow him to look back at his patient's movement and better understand their injury. The camera gun was eventually surpassed by the film camera, used in some of the earliest known films by the Lumiere brothers, and is considered to be the true starting point for cinema. But not too long after this, the concept of a camera in the form of the gun would once again become useful, but this time for the opposite reason Dr. Marie had intended. The Hythe camera gun was invented to train World War I fighter pilots air-to-air -air combat at a time when ammunition was an important resource not to be wasted, allowing the operator to simulate firing at a target, but when they would pull the trigger, instead of firing bullets, it would trigger the camera shutter. It allowed an officer to review the images of the exact moment when the trigger was pulled, and reveal where the operator was aiming. The Hythe gun was designed to mimic the feel of the Lewis machine gun with the same weight and reloading procedure. Its similarities also enabled it to be mounted in the same places as the Lewis machine gun. The Hythe machine gun was widely used by the British by 1918 and had become a popular training tool for the French and the US. The idea was even adapted by the Japanese in World War II. Janssen was a pioneer in cinema, even though his invention was for purely scientific purposes and not art. It allowed Maybridge, Edison, Marie, and Lumiere's, among others, to follow and build upon his work. His revolver plates captured a rare moment, not just on an astrological level, but also on a cultural one. And although his plates were lost, its legacy goes much further than the camera gun and the changing uses of technology. The work of his time wasn't limited to the creation of cinema, but brought about the start of a new form of visual communication, an expression that at its core is still being adapted today. The camera gun and its derivatives are part of that story. Janssen gave a speech following the first ever projection of a film to an audience by the Lumiere brothers. In it, he spoke about the successful progression of the medium and how he enjoyed the illusion. This is the film that was shown, which is of the audience themselves, including Janssen, as they stepped off the boat, about to enter the very conference where this film would be revealed. It's believed to be the first film developed and shown to its subject on the same day as they were filmed. If you enjoyed the video, then let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to hear what people think. Here's a little sneak peek at my next video, which will be available soon. So keep an eye on the channel.